Hello and welcome everybody, my name is Europius and today I have a new episode of Assassin's Creed The Real History to share with you all. In this series, I compare events in a selected character's life within one of the Assassin's Creed games to the actual history the individual lived through. As always, beware of major story spoilers. For today's episode, we will be taking a look at the history of the Byzantine nobleman Manuel Palaiologos. As is customary, I'll begin this episode by sharing with you his pre-game history, which will inform us on his background prior to ACR, then his in-game history, which you see depicted in the game, and lastly we will analyze the differences between what happens in the game to the real historical events of the individual's life. Starting with the pre-game history, Manuel Palaiologos was born in 1455 and was the youngest son of the eventual claimant to the Byzantine throne, Thomas Palaiologos and his consort Catherine Zakaria. Known as the Despot of Maria, Thomas also fathered Andrew Palaiologos, Helena Paleogina, and Zoe Paleogina, who would later change her name to Sophia Paleogina and one day become the grandmother of Ivan the Terrible. Despite his noble familial connections, Manuel was born following the fall of Constantinople in 1453, where the occupying Byzantines were defeated by the invading armies of the Ottoman Empire, led by Sultan Mehmed II. For this reason, he did not grow up in their former nation's capital, but was instead raised in Maria until he and his family fled to Corfu in 1460 following the Ottomans' advancements. After his escape, Manuel's father, Thomas Paleologos, left his family and visited Rome. As he arrived, he made a very ceremonial entrance and was greeted as the Byzantine Emperor on March 7, 1461. Manuel and his brother remained with their mother, who eventually died in August of 1462 and later joined their father shortly before his death. Once in Rome, Manuel and Andrew were raised by a cardinal and under the surveillance of the church. In reason of their noble blood and the relation between the church and the Byzantine Empire, Manuel received a pension of 50 ducats a month until the death of Pope Pius II in 1464. Unfortunately for the young Byzantine noble, the new pope, Sixtus IV, was not as generous, and therefore his pension payments came to a sudden end. Manuel and some of his family members then spent many of the following years living in exile. Reaching a point of what appeared to be desperation, Manuel returned to Constantinople and shocked his former Roman allies by begging the Ottoman Sultan Mehmed II, who had conquered his lands, for mercy. A deal was brokered, and in exchange for his rights to the imperial throne, the Sultan agreed to give Manuel an estate and a good pension. The former Byzantine nobleman then married a woman, whose name is not recorded historically, and together they had two sons, John, who died young, and Andrew. Manuel then proceeded to convert to Islam. Following this point in history, very little is known about Manuel Paleologos' life as he merged into the Ottoman society and eventually died in 1512. It would technically have been following the period when Manuel returned to the Ottoman Empire that we first met him in Assassin's Creed Revelations. In this AC game, the former Byzantine nobleman had assimilated into Ottoman society not to live a peaceful and protected life, but instead to wage a secret war against those who he saw as taking everything from his people. Although this was not historically accurate, it made for an interesting use of the lack of historical information concerning his life once he returned to his homeland. In summary, the main differences between Manuel Paleologos' actual life and his representation in Assassin's Creed Revelations were based in the fact that his in-game depiction was demonstrated in a time frame in which history had little or no record of him. Firstly, the entire case of him being a Templar and combating the Ottomans in a secret war was fictional. Secondly, his alliance with the rebel forces of the Turkmen Shakulu was also an unrecorded event, especially since the Renegade historically died before his later confrontation in the game with Ezio. Lastly, Manuel's death was also fictionalized, since although we know the year in which he died, there's evidently no record that he was killed by an Italian assassin. Even with these changes, however, the history of Manuel was well represented in AC Revelations as it offered the origins for why Ubisoft would depict his fictional war against the Ottomans taking place. Because power begets peace, Flaka. It cannot happen in reverse. These people would drown without a fair hand to lift them up and keep them in line. There he is. The monster I came to kill. And with that final fact, we've finished another episode of Assassin's Creed, The Real History. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you did, I highly recommend you try out one of the Assassin's Creed games. Thank you all for watching. Please leave any suggestions for future characters from any of the Assassin's Creed games that you'd like me to cover in the comment section below. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all in a future historical episode.